Well, mother f Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Time with John. Mm, 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 mm. Coffee is good this morning. It's a, a lovely morning. We have a little bit of snow outside coming down. Not a lot, just enough to, to be able to see it. Um, but I wanted to hop on because, <laughs> as many of you know, the other day I put up an apology e uh, video. And um, I had I had a couple of people tell me I shouldn't apologize. I shouldn't apologize. And uh, here's one of the messages I got. Oh, my God, you said a cuss word? Really? John, you took the time to apologize to your audience? Apologize for being human? I'm a fan, but do, you, but do not think you should apologize. So this brought up a topic for me, which I wanted to discuss on the, on the videos, and that, that is the, the, the concept of words and specifically cuss words, and dirty words, dirty words, right? There's, there's an interesting thing in, in our work culture where we've singled out certain words as being bad words. You know, George Carlin did a whole routine on the seven words you couldn't see on, say on TV or radio. And I won't say them here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I, I am less about the words and more about the intentions, right? But many words have preloaded intentions. For instance, um, if I were to drop the F-bomb, you know, for me, which, which is what I did on the video the other day, <laughs> um, for me, that that expression was an expression of excitement in that moment. However, for other people, that word holds a very negative connotation, a negative power. There's an but there's an intention behind words. Um, I did a video recently, which is coming out soon. I think, I think it might even come out, or it may have already come out. For all that matters. Um, where I had an epiphany moment where I stopped being racist. Well, after that, there was a friend of mine, his name was Atlas, and Atlas was a, was a young black man in my hometown, and um, every time he'd see me, he'd call me a crazy-ass white boy, and I'd call him a stupid-ass N-word. But it, there was no intention behind it. And I remember coming into town one night and then running into Atlas, and he was very upset, and I said, like, Atlas... What's what's wrong? Why are you so upset? He says, he says I had I got to do a fight. I got to do a fight. I go, what? oh my God, are you all right? He said, I'm fine. He said, but I said, why were you fighting? He says, the man called me an N word. You know, he used the word, and he called me an N word. I said, Atlas, I call you that every day. He says, yeah, but he he meant it. Yeah, you know, he meant it. There's an intention behind words, and and sometimes that intention behind the words is is um is carried on with the word itself. And so the concept of not apologizing for dropping that word the other day is anathema to my, my belief system. It's, it, it doesn't jive with me. It's, it's, it's a situation where I understand that I've created a platform, a, a, a YouTube channel, that talks about spiritual topics. And I've made it a very respectful place where people come and they can they can speak their truth and they can they can not worry about the judgment and I let them know that, that I respect their beliefs. And to not apologize would be to would be to be defiant and, and non apologetic. To respect their beliefs or intentions is the loving thing to do. So I choose not to use that kind of language on, on, my, on my channel because everybody else is using that channel. And I personally find the language when it's not being used in private, which is what I thought I was doing, right? Um, I just find it to be completely disrespectful. And I don't allow it on my, on my channel at all. 
I, someone uses it, I, I block them. And I did this I, in years past on my, when I had a Facebook page really going, people would use that language on my Facebook page. And I, I, I'd tell them, you know, you are more than welcome to go use that language on your page. This is my space. You know, you, you, don't, you stay away from my space with that kind of language. Because it, I, don't, I don't want to create that sort of atmosphere where people start using words that offend others. Now, should I apologize? Absolutely, I should apologize because I created a safe place. And then in inadvertently and accidentally um, violated the, the trust that I had created, that this place was not going to be like that. And so the concept of intention behind words is, is, is huge because there, there are words that, that aren't even on the dirty list that if you put the right intention behind it, you know, like the word boy, you know, the word boy with the right intention, with the wrong intention, actually, technically, can be a very hurtful word, right? The word, you know, um, girl, same boy and girl, there you go, girl, you know, it can be very disrespectful, can be very hurtful, right? And, I think the the concept of of being non apologetic when others are hurt by words. Now, oftentimes somebody will, I'll, I'll say something that, and they'll get people will get offended by it because it, it goes against their beliefs. And I I, I, apolo- I say I apologize that you find that offensive. If you, I apologize if you find that offensive, it was not intended that way. And I, I will say it exactly that way, because what I'm doing is I'm coming from my word from their perspective and I'm seeing the other side I'm opening open myself enough to see the other side of it and you have to be able to do that with all people around you when you're when you're working with people you know in a, in a business environment you have to look at it from their perspective because you know it's they're having an experience too and the experience they're having in this moment is the experience of you and if you look at them and and, and, and just say, like a steamroller, they're gonna they're just gonna get crushed beneath me. Or I can look at them and I can go, Well, how how are they perceiving this? And then I go, Okay, well, is can I be more loving in this moment? Can I be more caring in this moment? My apology was not to say that I did something wrong. Because personally <laughs> in all honesty, I found the whole experience funny. But I find most experiences funny. I laugh at almost everything in my life. I find things funny. I thought the whole thing was hysterically funny. But I I felt I should apologize to those who didn't find it funny. And I wanted to I just wanted to jump on and talk about this because I had a couple people comment about it that I that I shouldn't apologize. Well, when you create a place where you don't have to hear that kind of language and you you you've created a place where they can let their guard down and then you suddenly hit them with something like that, of course I'm going to apologize. Did I think I did something wrong? I think I made a mistake. I think I made a, (laughs) by leaving the, the live stream going, I think I made a mistake. But I did not in any way, shape, or form feel that I was doing something wrong, like, like, that I'll be damned for or something of that nature. That, that doesn't, wasn't there at all. And my intention in that moment was excitement and joy. So I don't think there was anything wrong. In, and I don't think there's anything wrong in, in, in words in general. I think the intention behind the word is the important part. The intention behind the word, the feeling that, that, that the word generates and is being generated by the intention behind the words is the important part. Because there are, there are funny comedians who use this language all the time. Some of them use them effectively and funny. Some of them use, them use them specifically to shock and amaze. And I, I challenge any of you who, who do cuss a lot, I challenge any of you to do a month where you don't cuss a lot. And you're going to find, some, you're going to find something really interesting. You're going to find a very different feeling within yourself. And it's, it's going to shock you. 
I remember there was um, several years that I was very vehement about never cussing. And it was during the time I was doing the Renaissance Festival in Maryland. And I remember <laughs> I remember a day <coughs> where I, I, uh, I overheard a guy and a girl. The guy was our, our stage manager. The girl was a fan. <coughs> and they were talking about they were talking about how, how much they, it was, this is. This sounds like vanity, but it was. It isn't meant to be. They were talking about how much they respected me, and they were talking about how you know, how much they they learned from me and all this all this stuff. And I heard the guy say to her, "I don't think he cusses, <laughs> right? I don't think he cusses." And it came to the consensus they thought it was a bad thing that I didn't cuss. Because they thought they, I needed the cuss. What they didn't realize is that, that just not saying those words. I think, I think a lot of times people use those words as a default or a, uh, a, um, a way of just basically um, filling time. Or, or many times they use the words, to make themselves feel powerful. And when you feel powerful enough not to have to use words, that they're just filler words, really. Um, when you give yourself the permission to not have to, there's a, there's a unique perspective. And actually, it's, it's interesting. Like I said, the one I said it the other day on the air, I was not you know, intending for anyone to hear that. But I think that's respectful. And that was my intention be respectful. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. The John of New Channel is solely funded by your generous donations and purchases of private readings and merchandise. To help out, go to johnofnew.com or use the donation link in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.